sentenced to death, when a judge can decide whether you live or die. I know it sounds very dramatic, but the reality is that many countries use execution as a form of punishment. And they found in some cases, the person who was executed was actually innocent. But that's a separate story altogether. Today, I want to talk to Amnesty International Malaysia, who are on a campaign to save the life of one Sharul Izani. And we have Shamini Dashini, the ED of AI Malaysia. Tell us, Shamini, why should we save the life of Sharul? Sharul Izani Suparman is um, a young man who was sentenced to death for drug trafficking 12 years ago. What he had done was, uh, when he was 19, 19, that's right. 19, he borrowed a friend's bike and wanted to meet another friend in a warung nearby. But what happened was, uh, the friend had told him when, he, when, he, when Sharul took the bike, the friend had told him that the road tax on this had expired. So as he's going to meet the other friend in the restaurant, there was a police roadblock. So he panicked because he wasn't, he didn't, the road tax had expired. Yes. He wasn't wearing a helmet. Okay. So he made a, a U-turn. U-turn. Yeah. And We've all been there. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately. Uh, the police gave chase and when they caught him, they discovered in the basket of the motorcycle, there was a red plastic bag with two brick-like um, items wrapped in, in newspaper. Okay. And what Sharul has always maintained for the last 12 years is that, you know, when he, borrows his, when he borrowed his friend's bike and it was a common occurrence to borrow the bike, he didn't make it a habit to go through the friend's items. Of course not. Right? So, um, what those two brick-like items were, they were 622 grams of marijuana. That's about this much, it's right? About, yeah, it's about a phone size. Oh. Yeah, times two. Okay. And in Malaysia, when you are in possession of a certain amount of drugs, you are automatically presumed to be a trafficker. So they arrested him and he was charged with drug trafficking. And six years later, uh, after incarceration in Sungai Buloh, he was sentenced to death. He's lost all his appeals and now uh, Sharul is at the clemency stage. He's appealing to the Sultan of Selangor. Right, the yeah. royalty to save his life. Yes. And, and uh, how do you know about this case? I mean, have you met Sharul or...? We have not met Sharul as yet. The case came to our attention uh, by, via the family. They contacted us and asked us whether we could help. As Amnesty Malaysia, we discussed it with our colleagues and the death penalty team at our International Secretariat in London. We looked at the, fact of the facts of the case, we studied these cases, we looked through all the documents that were submitted by the family, and we realised that there are questionable circumstances, including the quality your legal representation that Sharul received and we wanted to champion this case. And drug trafficking in this country is mandatory death sentence, right? That's right. And the point is that, is it working? I mean, drug taking and trafficking is a huge issue mm -hmm. in Malaysia. Does it work? Does death penalty, does it dissuade people from selling drugs? I'm glad you asked the question. It has been proven over the, with decades of research, that the death penalty is not an effective deterrent to crime. Mm. And uh, in Malaysia, we have the mandatory uh, death penalty for... That means the judge has no discretion. No yet. discretion. He, he has to sentence the person to death. That's right. right. Yeah. And from what we know through a study that was done by the death penalty project in Malaysia, judges do not, if they had the discretion, they would not want to sentence someone to death. Okay. But what is AI's position on the death penalty? Is there is I know there's a movement to say let's remove the death penalty for drug traffickers, for drug offences, but let keep it in in the books for other you know crimes mm. as in murder and so on. What is AI's position on this? The United Nations, the UN, has, um, uh, according to the ICCPR, which is one of the UN conventions, the ICCPR says that you can use the death penalty for most serious offences. So that category of most serious offences means inten intentional killing. Drug trafficking and drug offences does not, um, do not fall in that category. For amnesty, our position is we want complete no, yes, abolition, no death penalty. No corporal punishment, no capital punishment. That's right. It should be removed from the books altogether. Yeah. Right. And going back to Charles, you know, how, what's the campaign like and what is it that you would like the public to do? Every year, uh, Amnesty International as a movement, and we are a movement of 80 uh, sections or offices in around the world, and we are backed by 7 million members and supporters throughout the world. And Sharul is one of four global cases for the World Day Against Death Penalty 
um, this year. Mm. What that means is that the entire force of the movement is going to be concentrating on Sharul Izani and the mandatory death penalty in Malaysia for the use of drugs. To help save Sharul Izani's life, please click, click on the link in the description and to sign the petition. And uh, the petition basically asks that Sharul's sentence be either commuted or that um, he be pardoned. I see. Yes. Well, good luck on the campaign. Thank you. you know, we will be praying that, you know, that he will be saved. And I really do believe that we all can do something to save this man's life, this young man's life. Not because he's maintaining his innocence, but because it's just not proportionate for allegedly carrying this amount of marijuana, you're going to take away his life. It's just not right. So do go and sign that petition. Save a life. Thank you.